Hey guys, I want to talk to you about the movie The Magnificent Yankee today. Um, I'm not wearing any makeup. I know I've done that before on one of the videos, but now you can see my blemishes. Whatever. Um, I just really wanted to talk about this movie. Um, it wasn't particularly amazing or anything, but you'll see. Um, so this movie was made in 1950, and it was directed by John Sturgis, and earlier this year I watched another film by John Stur or directed by John Sturgis, um, I believe called The Girl in White. Um, so you can check my review slash me talking about it in my videos. Um, the film stars Louis Calhoun, Anne Harding, and Edward Franz, and... It tells the story of Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes. The screenplay was written by Emmett Lavery. I hope that's how you pronounce his last name. Um, he had also written a play which was based on the biography Mr. Justice Holmes, which was written by, let me check his name, Francis Biddle. Um, Francis was once a private secretary to Mr. Holmes, and he would later become the U.S. Attorney General under Roosevelt, I think. Um, he was also involved in the Nuremberg Trials. Um, and, yeah, it was a very um, light and fluffy um, film, as a lot of these biographical films tend to be from this era anyway. Um, and I just really, really, really wanted to watch it because um, in the synopsis it mentioned um, Louis Brandeis, and I am a fan of Mr. Brandeis. I love his wild hair. I love some of the decisions he made while he was um, in the Supreme Court. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am minoring in Jewish studies, so he's on my Great Wall of Great Jews, which I have in, on my wall over here. Um, if it were easier to move my laptop, I would show you, but it's it's in a in an awkward corner. Um, so yeah, I just really, really wanted to watch it for that. And um, Edward Franz, who plays Brandeis in this film, also reprised his role in a 1965 um, TV version of this. So I guess they really liked him in the film version. They got him in the TV version as well. Um, yeah, I just got into the whole uh, bromance going on between um, Holmes and Brandeis, and I asked one of my friends, who's a law student and is also super into Holmes and Brandeis and all those liberal lions of the court, um, if uh, Holmes and Brandeis were really that buddy buddy, and she was like, "Oh yeah, they were, they were pretty close," so that was cool. Um, yeah, that, that was just like, I was fangirling over Brandeis most of the time. So, my rating of the film might be a little skewed because of that. Um, on the whole, I'd say it's just an okay film. Um, I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it unless um, you like the cast in particular, or you're into um, the early 1900s or if you're like me and you're a little nutty for um, Supreme Court justices. Um, this film was nominated for a best actor in a leading role. Um, I don't know like how deserving Louis Kelhern may have been since I don't remember who else was nominated that year, but um, he's pretty fun in the role. 
Uh, and it was also nominated for Best Costume Design for a Black and White Film. And again, um, I don't know who was nominated that year, so <laughs> I don't know who to compare it to. Um, the costumes weren't particularly amazing. Um, it just happened to be a, a period film, so, um, you know, a lot of dresses from the early 1900s and um, that sort of thing. Um, nothing pr stood out in particular. Um, something I was going to say, but I've blanked. Um, oh yeah, um, uh, there was a lot of focus on, um, when Oliver Wendell Holmes and his wife not having any children of their own, and it sort of got me thinking about how... It seems to be a major issue, something that really gets focused on in, like, um, studio-era films. Like, maybe I'm, I'm, I just think that it's a thing, uh, but I wish I could remember the names of more films, but I think the, uh, I think it's called The Long Grey Line, um, with Tyrone Power. I remember he and his wife can't have kids either, and there's this whole thing of um, the boys that Tyrone Power's character mentors in that film becoming their children. And same goes for this film. Um, one of the focuses of The Magnificent Yankee is all the young men who were... Oliver Wendell Holmes' private secretaries over the years, um, all of them Harvard boys, um, and there's this one scene where it's Holmes' 80th birthday, I think, um, and all of his former secretaries come to his house, and it's like a, a very emotional moment for them, um, and I'll admit I got a little <laughs> emotional myself. That's not hard to do. I get emotional fairly easily. And yeah, I think that's something I'm going to keep in mind when I watch more studio era films. Like, I don't know. It's just something to think about. Um, and another thing, um, they mentioned the word Jewish, of course, because Brandeis is Jewish. But that's another thing I've noticed. That word doesn't get used very often. Um, like occasionally you'll, you'll hear um, Jewish people referred to as Hebrews, which has always seemed weird to me, but I guess it was commonplace back then. Um, so I think that's something else that I'm going to keep an eye out for um, in studio era films where there's a Jewish character, like how often does their religion get mentioned? Um, and I guess it always depends on what the film's about, but even films that are about, or that touch on um, the religion of these characters, like, I don't think they go out and say it. Um, even in films about World War II, and of course this is, I'm still talking about the studio era, um, it's dif different now, but yeah. Just got me wondering about a few things. And now I really want to learn more about Oliver Wendell Holmes and Louis Brandeis. And I'm a history nerd, so you better believe I'm going to start doing some digging. And that's about it, guys. So have a nice day. Thanks for watching.